Hmm. All right, it's uh, pretty late in the afternoon right now for me, but I did want to make this live stream because I think it's pretty important to talk about and I don't want to delay because I can just delay forever because of the fact that I am a perfectionist and I kind of have all these cameras here for a very limited amount of time. So I want to get talking about them. But um, if you are here, let me know. And if you have any questions about these particular cameras, let me know as well. I definitely need some tea. Oh, bad day. Oh. I may or may not be coming down with a bit of a cold, but don't tell anybody. Adam, good to have you here. Kema, Melissa, Miguel, good to have you here. Peru is in the house. So I am lucky enough to have a whole bunch of cameras in the house right now. This is the brand new Nikon, Nikon, Nikon Z6 or Z6. This is the naked sensor of the Nikon Z7. And here is my trusty old D750 of five years and my new ishness in the last six months, Sony A7 III. And I've got all these cameras. I've been testing them out a bunch. And I'd love to know what you guys want to know about these cameras. Adam says, hey there, Tyler Vu, welcome to the show, man. And so I've been shooting stills as well as video on all of these cameras. And the Nikons are the newest to the fold right now. And um, NPS, thank you so much, Nikon Pro Service, sent these out for me to test and put them through the ringer. I should make a very big disclaimer because of the fact that they have announced new firmware that has improved, the, actually included all new features, like literally all new features. Like you see this card here? I'm not a big fan of this card because they expensive, huh? It's called a XQD card, right? And the thing is, these are super fast cards, but they're also super expensive because like I've got like terabytes, literally terabytes of SD cards that I cannot use in these things. Tyler Vu says, A. Hey. I say, A hey, back. Miguel says, hello, mi amigo. Mwah. I miss you, man. I wish you could do another workshop together. You're too much fun, man. Okay, anyways, uh, but I digress. So things of beauty. A couple of things that I did want to talk about when uh, we get more people on the show, but there's six people watching right now. Hopefully the more will pop on. Uh, but I, what do you guys want to know? Hit me up, man. Because if you're interested in any of these cameras for photo or video, I'll try to make up believable answers. Huh? Huh? Pretty good, right? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, this is pretty cool too. They sent this along to me, which is the F T Z adapter. Very clever, huh? Because it takes F mount lenses, which are their O school lenses, like my beloved 85 1.8, and adapts them to the new Z mount adapter. So that's why it's called the F T Z adapter. Okay. It was kind of clever. Not the most clever thing to do, but yeah, it works. Okay, yeah. But who here is shooting with Nikon? Who here is shooting with Sony? Who here is shooting with Nikon Z? I want to know, man, because like these, these are kind of new to me and they're mirrorless. And I know they announced them and I even bought my Sony a7 III before they announced the Z series camera. I'm saying Z because I'm Canadiano, okay? All right, it's just who I am. But, uh, you know, people, I, I was kind of regretting a bit when I had purchased this because I was thinking, what Z mount full frame mirrorless from Nikon that can use all of my existing lenses with this FTZ adapter and make them like amazing. <laughs> I cried a little bit, but alas, I have gotten a lot of use out of my a7 III. And so I really can't deny the fact that this thing has served me very well for video use, but I do not like shooting this for stills. Um, and we can talk a little bit about that too, if you have any questions. Um, I know a lot of my friends have gone over to the uh, Sony camp um, to shoot stills with. I don't know how they survived this camera because the ergonomics suck donkey. Yes, it does. Adam asks, A7 best, but there is a problem with focusing in the dark reception conditions of F5.6. D750 best for flash. Oh, ho, ho, Adam, are you... Are you shooting both systems at the same time? Are you shooting the a7 III and the D750 concurrently? I would love to know because literally this is my stable of cameras right now. I still have not sold a single one of our four D750s because I love this camera so much. And actually there 
this is what's shooting my live stream right now. Like this is a cheap Panasonic like Handycam up that's giving you this view because it can autofocus, which is a nice trick that my D750s cannot do. But this camera is, that you're looking at right now is my D750. And I know it has zero autofocus for, for video, but it actually has very decent 1080p video, although it's a little bit more compressed than you'll find on the latest versions of any camera right now. So Adam says, yes, oh my goodness. Now for the A7 Mark III, I am shocked that any photographer would want to hold this all day because I hate it. I just don't like holding this camera. Like it's okay for video because for video I'm holding the lens, right? But for, for, for stuff up to my eyeball, this really sucks. Like the ergonomics was made by an engineer. No offense engineers, if you're an engineer, I'm sorry. But honestly, it does not feel good in hand. So Adam, how do you get past that point when you're carrying this all day long? And so anyways, I it's just a brick of a body. The uh, Z series cameras feel a lot better. And for stills, they shoot more like my D750 than the A7 III does. That being said, we are spoiled by great cameras all over. Okay, let's talk about a few things. Hell, hi, Ellen, good to have you here. Okay, now, first of all, before we talk about, oh, I should probably just start proper, hey? Okay, let's start proper and we'll kind of get this. Oh, am I, am I really blowing out the audio? Is it really loud, guys? It might be really loud. Let me take that down a bit. Okay, let's do that. So, okay, let's start in earnest here. And if you have any questions, hit me up. Ellen Ho, I should, I shoot Nikon for more than 20 years. Just a couple of years ago, started using the same Sony. I love Sony a7R 3 for video, but for still really doesn't get the photo quality like Nikon. I totally agree. Um, you know what, even in video mode, the Z or Z series cameras has beautiful color out of the camera in video as well as stills. And I know I'm used to the color of Nikon, but even coming from the Canon land, I know it's before the 5D Mark II series, but um, I love the Nikon colors, especially for skin tones. There just seems to be less tweaking necessary to make it really look beautiful. But okay, let's talk about this a little more and hit me up with any questions you guys might have because I've got these cameras only for another couple days. And so I can test them out until then, but um, they are going back to Nikon land. And I hope that I can uh, take a peek at them again once they get the firmware update. But for now, let's take a look at some of the questions I have. So let's hit this. Hey, my name's Dave from the Not So Much Chinese Secret Show. And today we are taking a look at dun, 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 the Nikon Z series of cameras and pitting them against my stable of D750s, which have been my tried and true shooter for the last five years, as well as ba -ba -da, my newishness Sony A7 Mark III beast of a video recorder. And so I got the Nikons from Nikon's Pro Service, so I did not buy them, but they sent them to me to test out. And I've been using them for just a couple days, so this is not a full review, but more of an overview and comparison between the different cameras. And I should note that there's a spoiler, Nikon has already released a firmware update which will add a couple of amazing features including eye autofocus which the Sony already has but we're not sure what the implementation is going to be like and I'm hoping they also improve the focus in both the stills mode and in the video mode because as I'll talk about it isn't quite as good of uh, as a sharpshooter in stills as my D750 and it doesn't have the same video autofocus, continuous focus as my Sony a7 III. So it's kind of in this limbo area in between right now. But they've done a lot of things right and I can really appreciate what they've done and put into the Z series. Now, I bought the a7 III before the Z series was announced and I gotta admit, I, I shed a tear when they came out because I was thinking, oh my goodness, did I just blow like a couple thousand dollars on a Sony camera and I should have waited for the Z camera? But you know what? I really can't think like that because I've been shooting with the Sony for months now and getting great video quality out of it. It's not without its downfalls because I really hate shooting stills with it because I don't like the feel of the body up to my eye and I find that it's not quite a great 
electronic viewfinder. It just doesn't feel right compared to the D750's optical viewfinder and the gorgeous EVF of the Nikon Z series. But um, before we go talking about that, let's talk about what's new in the Z series. First of all, as you'll notice, there is absolutely no mirror. It's a mirrorless camera and it is full frame. I will be talking more about the Z6, even though I have the Z7, the big brother right over here, because the Z6, like the Z7 has a lot more megapixels and it doesn't do video quite the same way. So it's not really the camera that I like. If you are a landscape artist or a commercial photographer who needs to, you know, blow up things for magazine size, you may consider the Z7, but for all intents and purposes, they have the same exact hardware and take kind of the whole system exactly the same. Um, now, the first thing you'll notice is that as Nikon shooters, everything feels great. Like if you take a look at the body side by side, you'll notice, well, let's get a clean output here, that the, the body is actually quite a bit thinner. And they made a big deal about this because they were able to really make the thinnest body possible. The flange distance between the sensor and the opening is very narrow, okay? And now if you take a look at the actual sensor, oh, this, this hole here, the Z, new Z mount is brand new. This is the F mount, the old mount, this is the Z mount, the new mount. And this is ginormous. Like you can pretty much see the whole sensor in there without any obscuration. And so this allows them to design a lot more optical options so that you can get more light onto that sensor but that also means that you're going to get bigger lenses and here's a weird comparison here if you take a look this is the 35 millimeter 1.8 new lens z mount this is the new 50 millimeter z mount and they're almost identical in height they have the same filter size on the front and it's really hard to tell them apart unless you kind of know exactly what you're looking for because the 50s is slightly more flanged out in the mid body portion. But if you compare this to my old lenses, here's my old 50 F mount. Here's the new 50 Z mount. It's a lot bigger, right? And it's a lot heavier too. We can do the same comparison with the 35. This is the old F mount F1.8 and this is the new 35 f 1.8 so even though mirrorless promised us smaller bodies as you'll see we're going to be able to like we have a slightly smaller body but the lenses are going to be bigger because we've got a much larger lens mount so you, if you're going to be traveling a lot you're going to have to make a lot more room in your your case for the lenses so anyways that being said the characteristics of the lenses are amazing i really like the 50 1.8 and i've got some video i've been shooting a ton because i have to give these cameras back i i don't have time to process it all yet but um, i will be showing you some stuff in the future and i really like the weird um lens flare i've been getting in videos and i'll show you that in a little bit it's got this really weird blue characteristics where you can almost see the aperture kind of develop around the the, the curvature of the lens which I know a lot of people don't like lens flare. I'm a big fan of lens flare, and I really like the way the 51.8 looks in video. Okay, that being said, ergonomic wise, it's got the same robustness that we're used to. As far as the, um, the covers on the ports, they are that nice rubber that we probably are used to. If you're from a D750, they feel even tighter than the D750, and my D750s have been rock solid for me for eons. This is compared to the A7 III, which has these plastic ports, which kind of don't give me the same kind of ugh, uh, joy when I'm punching them in, and they, they don't really have the same um, they kind of plastic versus rubber. So I kind of don't think they're going to be as weather, weather sealed as the Z series or my D750. So I wouldn't take these outside and abuse them quite as much for the Sony's. Now, as far as the actual ergonomics are concerned, these feel great. The grip is nice and big. I know some people have said that the F1 and the F2 buttons at the front of the lens are kind of hard to reach, but I often choose to use my hand and grip the body like this. And so I can execute the F2 function button with my left hand. And that gives me a more stable base when I'm shooting versus trying to reach for it with my fourth finger, okay? So there's different ways to get to these buttons, so don't really worry about that. Just find a grip that you can give a good solid base and you can definitely get there without a problem. I should make a note that one thing that really tripped me up was the new touch screen on the back here. And what the default option is, I should put a lens on here so it doesn't look so weird. Uh, one of the default things that it does in the <laughs> The lit with this here is um, it allows you in the photo shoot mode to just touch and anywhere and it'll actually 
take an exposure. So watch this. I'm going to show you this. And so it just took a picture and it moved my focus point, right? Well, this is kind of a neat feature unless you don't know it's doing it. Because remember I told you I hold my camera weird? Well, I was using my hand here and my thumb was touching it. And then I was focusing, you know, whatever, having it up to my eye, putting it away from my eye. And I, and I thought the camera was had a life of its own because it was taking pictures and moving the focus point down to the bottom corner. But it was because this mode was on. So you can just tap that and you can turn off the auto shutter and auto focus on the back panel. Yeah, so a little weird for me, but that was the trick for me that I had to turn off. That being said, the LCD on the back is amazing and also much better than Nike uh, or Sony's implementation. I find that the touch screen is much more sensitive, so you don't require like eh, eh, big jabs to make the focus point move and it's very easy to navigate. And big bonus is that the, the touch menu works in all the menu systems. So I can actually use this to navigate around and it's much easier than Nikon system, which turns off the touch interface with the menus. And with the EVF, which is what you're looking through here, there's no more glass that you just look right through with the mirror. So the EVF is actually gorgeous and much more detailed than the Sony's. And so I do prefer looking through the Nikon Z series. And one tip that I would recommend is to change the default standby timer because what I found was that the standby timer, if, I, if I'm using two cameras, um, if I'm shooting an event, I would put one up and it would be black because it went to sleep, right? Well, that kind of is jarring and you can't see anything obviously. And so I prefer to leave the timers on to run a little bit longer so that when I bring it up, I can instantly see what's through the camera. And it makes me feel like, you know, pretty much the same as my D750. One big benefit of electronic viewfinders is the fact that one, you can review images in your electronic viewfinder, but also two, you can kind of see in the dark. It's really cool because I always find that in really dark scenarios, the D750, I found that the optical viewfinder actually was really dim. And so that meant that it was really hard for me to even see what I was actually framing. With electronic viewfinders, they can add gain to the sensor, which means I can literally see better through the viewfinder than actually in my actual view. And so it's not gonna help the autofocus because I find that the autofocus also struggles in low light as every autofocus does. But being able to see and compose in the dark is a big benefit of having an electronic viewfinder. Now, let's talk about the customizability as well as the layouts are concerned. I love my D750 and for shooting stills, it was amazing. But one of the biggest complaints that I have of the D750 is the very centralized cluster of autofocus points that it has. And so you couldn't really move a point past this really central cluster. So you're, you always have to use this compose, uh, recompose, uh, or focus and recompose method to get a good shot. With the with the um, Nikon Z series, at least the Z6 has over like 200, 90% coverage of the autofocus areas over the actual entire sensor. What that means is that I can move the sensor off to the sides anywhere I want and compose and keep my composition there and while my focus point doesn't change and just re refocus as necessary with my back button focusing and it works really well. I really like that. Sony is also very similar as well so they are both kind of on par with that. Big improvement over the old DSLRs. And the other thing that I really do like is the customizability of the buttons. But I do find that Sony, even though I gripe about its feeling, does even give us more customizability. One thing that I love to do is I'm able to actually spin the dial and change the ISO without having to press any button. I can't do that with this. I still have to press and hold the dedicated ISO button at the top and then spin the dial with that, with that button held, okay? That isn't quite as intuitive to me. And one day I hope that all manufacturers will be able to just use a stepless ISO and just treat it like a volume knob so that when we're shooting video, we can change the gain without having to disrupt in steps the actual exposure. Okay, now, whew, that's a big mouthful. A couple of things that are really nice for existing Nikon shooters is that they use the same battery, okay? Now, it's slightly different. Now, the new battery is called the, what is it called? It's a weird name. It is the ENEL15B. Now, the old Nikon D750s that I have used the same battery in shape and power, but it's called the ENEL15 or the ENEL15A. The B 
is different because it can be charged in the camera via USB-C. I believe the camera has to be off to be charging, but the fact that you can charge it in camera is a nice convenience if you're traveling with it. You can also use legacy batteries, but these cannot be charged in the camera. I should note that it's kind of a blessing and a curse because I've literally got thousands of dollars worth of these batteries to run all of our D750s. And these can also be used in the Z series. So that's a really nice bridge from old to new. The downside is that these batteries are not large and compared to my Sony a7 III, which has the wonderful giant Z, ah, Z battery, uh, this thing lasts forever and I can literally probably shoot uh, a full day with two of these. You will probably want four or five of these if you're shooting video because the EVF, the LCD take a lot more power than our optical brethren with, with the old DSLRs. Okay, now besides that, Oh, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, the XQD slot. Okay, there's only one slot. I don't want to rant about that. I'm going to make a separate rant because I don't believe dual slots are necessary for pros. It's kind of like saying I need two engines in my car because I'm a race car driver. Nope, you just need another car. All right, so a backup is another camera. You can't just expect another card slot to be your backup. I think I shared a video about my Sony and how I was so unhappy that the, car, the actual camera froze up when it had a firmware bug that locked the camera up if you use a card that was written over again um, by the same camera even. So I had video on it, I tried to shoot raw JPEGs or raw stills and the whole camera locked up. It wouldn't take a picture. So in that case, having 10 SD slots would not have saved me. And so it's not a backup. So really the XUD one slot isn't a big deal. I do wish they gave us a second slot right over here that took SD cards because I have terabytes worth of SD cards that I would love to use and I don't need the fast buffer all the time to clear if I'm not shooting sports and I also don't need to shoot 4k video all the time and so I think SD cards would have been plenty fast but you know they're looking to future proof it a little bit and again in the firmware update that's coming out in May not only can they do XD uh, QXD cards sorry I can't say it they are going to be com a CF Express card which is actually the same form factor but um, not proprietary Sony speak and they should be also very very fast so that's kind of nice and kind of not nice as well. Now, my biggest gripe with the Z series cameras is the autofocus. Now, I found that I had experiences that they were great and I've had experiences where I questioned my sanity because I thought, oh, am I doing something wrong or is the camera doing something wrong in getting achieving focus? I've shot sports, I've shot portraits in the studio, um, I've shot video as well. And in video mode especially, it has a long way to go to catch up to Sony and I'm just presuming Canon, which is the two class leaders in autofocus for continuous focus in video. Now for stills though, I do prefer the Z series over the Sony a7 III, but I'm still so used to my D750, and even though I must focus and recompose all the time, I know with surety that the system's gonna be nailing it for me, or I'm gonna get maybe seven out of 10 shots in, in focus. The Z series cameras, I'm not getting that kind of consistency yet, but it might be user error because I've only had these cameras for a little bit, or it might be the focusing system, but I do wish that I had these after the firmware update so that I could really put them through their paces and make sure that it's just not user error, that I know exactly what their focusing system is doing. But um, yeah, I, I'm really impressed with it. Oh, I should also mention for video shooters that if you are more, uh, I'm not sure, I shouldn't say more professional because there's a lot of professional videographers who don't need to fully kit out um, or shoot raw in, raw video with this thing. But these things are beast. They've allowed you to shoot 10 bit raw out of the HDMI and that gives you billions of more colors than standard 8-bit color, right? And so if you're shooting for Netflix or you want to, or if you want to make documentaries that you want to go to Netflix, their rules are really strict on your color science and how much dynamic range you need. And these cameras are amazing. The sensor is beautiful. And as I said, the colors straight out of camera are better than my Sony, um, as well as my D750, just because this one sucks for video, the D750 in comparison, right? And now the one thing is the autofocus. Again, it's not going to be as good as the Sony or the Canon. But again, if you're kidding up and going to an external monitor to record like the new Ninja 5 and you've also got um, manual focus, you might actually do manual focusing instead of wanting to do autofocusing if you're doing something that big and you're going to Netflix. So this might be the best sensor for full frame as well. I've heard a lot of great things about the Blackmagic um, 
new Pocket 4K, but that's still a Micro Four Thirds. This is a full frame mirrorless camera, right? And you can pretty much, I'm, I know it's new to the market, so you're gonna have to wait for some adapters to get on there, but it is full frame, which means we can get some amazing image quality, even in very low light, and get that amazing bokeh or bokeh that we all love. Okay, so I really think that Nikon's done an amazing job making it familiar to Nikon users and just feels so good in hand to shoot. I do think that they need to update that autofocus and they know it and that's why the firmware is coming. I do wait and see how the, the firmware is going to update the video autofocus because that is definitely somewhere where they're lacking. But solid effort and I am kind of sad that these are going back to Nikon so quickly because I do want to put them through the paces some more. But um, hopefully if you have any questions, hit me up and I will try to answer them and or find people who know the answers. I'm just going to read some of the comments here. Adam says, I like Ergo, dial for everything ISO, shutter, F, EV. I use A7 for Volander 41.4 and Planar 51.4 contacts. Wow, that is some awesome kit, dude. Adam says Z6 one slot, they're not in game yet. You know, I don't care about one slot, but that's kind of a existential issue or crisis that I don't have to worry about right now. Okay, well, welcome to the show, Ryan, Jennifer, Christian, Andres, um, Ari, Harinder, Travis, and Jeffrey. But uh, for now, I think I'll call that quits. Oh, did I put a thought of the day in here yet? I think it, I did! This is the thought of the day before we go. Failure is not fatal, but failure to change, maybe. Woo. And so I really like that, you know, Nikon, this is their first foray into full frame cameras and I think they've done a really good job. Um, I'm, I don't regret getting my Sony yet. With the firmware update, I might. <laughs> um, but I still love my D750s. And it's a great time to be a creative, whether you're doing photography or video or making the transition to both. Mirrorless cameras, it's not, you can't deny they're here to stay. And so hopefully that was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If you think um, there's a better option or um, yeah, I'd love to hear it because you know, it's a brave new world out there now. So thanks for watching guys, God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.